Hello and welcome to our viewers on Crux Investor. We're here today at the WNA conference and I'm sitting beside Mark Chalmers, Energy Fuels. Hello, Mark. Hello, man. How are you? Very, very well. Um, we're going to talk, talk in a second. I'm going to just remind the viewers that we're going to talk about a bunch of subjects today. Look in the description below and click on the relevant timestamp. That'll take you to that part of the video. And if I can ask that you click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to see more videos like this, click the notification bell as well. So let's get on with it, Mark. Welcome to London. Hey, it's good to finally meet in person. I know, right? You know, so, I mean, uh, Skype is only so personal, right? It, it, it is. You're, you're as charming as you are uh, online. Uh, so nice to see you. So what, why are you here? What are you hoping to get out of it? Who are you talking to? Yeah, look, look um, you know, w a is an annual meeting, and it's, it's sort of the melting pot of the nuclear industry. Mm. Um, people come to this uh, you know, religious, re, religiously. Mm. Um, so, you know, I just make a, a number of contacts, refresh uh, uh, old contacts and, and make new contacts. So, you know, I think it's, it's more nuclear power centric, yeah. uh, but the uranium miners do show up as well. And um, when I'm on, um, come to London, I also take advantage of doing some marketing at the same time yep. uh, to, to make the trip as efficient as possible. Right, okay. Have you got investors over here? Work. Well, no, there's a number of investors. It's, it's kind mm -hmm. of interesting that, uh, you know, when I'm going to a, uh, one of the events with WNA or something, somebody will sit next to me and they say, hey, uh, I'm yeah. an investor. Uh, yeah. uh, what's going on? You know, so, right. um, no, look, 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 I think um, certainly in the, this business, these public companies and the world nuclear uh, industry, uh, it's important to keep your, your networks uh, alive and well. For sure. And now, so t talking of attendees, is, have you seen any utility groups here? Oh, yeah, absolutely. The utilities religiously come to WNA. So, right. um, so, you know, as I said, it's, um, you know, I'm not one that, that believes you've got to go to every conference out there, but, uh, you know, these, these annual events that are well attended, you, yeah. you, you do need to be at these. And are you having any, any, any good conversations so far? What's the general mood? Oh, look, and I, think, I think the general mood seems to be improving in the nuclear um, fuel cycle and all aspects of it. You know, I think you're hearing a lot more about you know, micro reactors, yeah. um, you know, the small um, modular reactors. Um, I think that um, there seems to be the tide is changing. Uh, you know, and, and, and that's good. In, in the sense that, what, there's new technologies coming through? Or what, what are you referring yeah, to? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's new technologies, uh, it's advanced reactor designs, it's different uh, fuel products. Uh, I think there's this realization that nuclear power is a key element to uh, carbon emissions, a uh, number of things. So right. I think um, there seems just to be a, a bit more upbeat um, mood that I saw maybe two, three years ago. So, okay, I can't not talk about price discovery because surely that's going to be the key driver for the mood. You know, people are waiting for the price to move. So have you had any conversations around that? You've got a sense of that or people just avoiding you know, the topic? It, 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 every year that it's one more year is one more year closer to, to right. getting those prices. Um, but yeah, no, look, we need uh, uh, commercial drivers for this. Yeah. Um, this industry, um, you know, people need to make money. People can't continue to lose money. So, Mike, let me ask you about what elements that you're in control of, okay? So, you've told me in the past you need price to be at circa what? Well, we, we need to have um, north of 50. Um, right. But I, I tell people to really have a sustainable um, uranium production in the United States and really pretty much anywhere in the world. Mm. You need north of 60. You know, right. you really need a six handle. The true uh, price of producing a pound of uranium mm. is um, probably $60 per pound. Uh, you know, one of the issues with a number of these companies, um, they exist largely because they got kickstarted with uh, uh, state-owned enterprise dollars, mm. you know, whether that be in the former Soviet Union, you know, even to a certain extent in the United States in the early days yeah. with things like conversion um, and even some of the mining, some of the mines were discovered. Uh, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s because mm -hmm. of uh, the government uh, supporting uh, development of the nuclear fuel cycle. And then take somebody like Cameco. You know, mm. Cameco has uh, nine or ten assets and, and probably seven or eight of those 
uh, came out of uh, state enterprises, whether it be the federal government or the, or the uh, state of Saskatchewan. But, but what are the things that you can control? I mean, are you able to drive your price down, or is it the fact that the grade is the grade, and that's you, you optimize this? Price? Yeah, you know, look, look it, when it when you get to um, you know these these companies, um, you know, you can only control so much. Mm. Uh, you know, you can, to a certain extent, you can control your, your overheads, um, but only to a limit. Uh, mm. When you look at a uh, fully permitted, constructed uh, facility, you have certain requirements when it comes to uh, regulatory compliance, uh, you know, insurance, uh, property mm. taxes, um, you know, um, routine maintenance, um, you mm. know, uh, that, that you can only do so much with. You know, there's sort of right. like a fixed cost element there. Yeah. Um, you know, you can, you can always strive and you always do strive for improved efficiencies, better recoveries, um, trying to come up with smarter ways of doing things, uh, re, you know, to reduce the cost. But, but ultimately, mm -hmm. it's got to be driven on commercial demand. And the commercial demand has to be at levels that support those activities with a margin. Sure, without, without question. But like, you know, you've been through a couple of cycles, right? A few. A few. Yeah. Well, you know, the funny thing about the uh, uranium industry is um, the cycles are, 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 are longer yeah. than like in uh, gold, you know, precious metals or other. Sure. So, but yeah, I've been through uh, cycles so, since the 70s. So what have you learned? What have I learned? That you can use today. What do you know? Well, I think, I think the, the key thing I've learned is you've got to be in the business before the cycle turns up. If you're Meaning not, what? what does that mean? Well, that means that you need to be positioned. You mm. need to have um, the assets. Yeah. Um, you need to have the people. Um, you need to have the readiness uh, to go back into production. Because if if you're not, mm. um, you know, by the time you you try to get yourself organized, and it takes you know five or ten years, yeah. you miss the upswing, and and then you start looking at the downswing and. And you, you know it's pretty hard to develop a company on a downswing in this kind of a of a industry. Even though a lot of opportunities, the biggest opportunities are created on the downswing or at the bottom. For, for sure, and you know we, we've spoken to a few people of a similar view. Let's talk about the U.S. You are the, where are we at? No, let's talk about the U.S. United States of America. Okay, yeah. you're you position yourself as number one uranium producer. Although that doesn't mean much these days because no one's producing, yeah, right? Yeah. But you're, when you're in a position to go, you'll be ready to go. You're sitting with a bunch of assets. You've got a mill. So you've got a lot, a lot of moving parts, which I'd like to talk about. But I'm more interested in what it means for you because price, if it gets up to 40 bucks, it's no good to you. If it gets up to 50 bucks, you might start making different decisions. And if it gets above 55, you, there's some there's some economies of scale there which will allow you to work out what you're going to do first. But yeah. you've got a bunch of cash today, yep. about 40, 45 million bucks. So you can ride this out for a while at whatever speed you want. But your competitors in the US, what are they going to do? Well, that's a good question. You know, um, you know as I said in past interviews, yeah. um, I've learned that you have to have the financial capability. Mm. You do not want to sail too close to the wire mm. uh, financially in yeah. this space. Um, you know, desperation financings are not pretty, and and we want to be in a position that we're yeah. not put in that position. Um, you know, I think um, you know the, the 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 reality is that even when you're ready, like we are. Mm. where we have facilities that are producing uranium or vanadium mm. this moment yeah. mm. to ramp up still costs a lot of money. Yeah. And, and from our perspective, you know, relatively speaking, you know, we need probably in the order of around $50 million of working capital yeah. uh, before that money starts really coming back in a material way. Right. Um, but those that are less ready and have less of a balance sheet, mm. um, you know, that's even pushed out quite substantially. So you're, you're saying is yeah. you, you are more ready yeah. than your other U.S. competitors. So you're ahead of the You've got a bit of money to allow you to accelerate reasonably quickly yeah. when you press the button. When we press the button, right. but even when we are ready and we're currently producing, yeah. there is a spool up time, and that spool up time. Uh, even for us, you know, it's, a, it's a 12 months to 24 months, you know, to start spooling up. So, ask, yeah. so um, you know, a lot of people that have some project that has sat there for, um, you know, if, it, if it's been a project before, 
you know, after it sits for 10, 15, 20 years, and then they think they're going to run in and start producing in, in, a, in a few months or six months, uh, pretty wishful thinking. Well, that, that, that comes on to a nice point, actually. And I was speaking to John Borshoff about this topic, which is there are very few people in this industry today who have ever produced uranium. You're one of them. Correct. Okay. There's a whole bunch of skills that are required to do that. It's not a case of it's just mining, Matt. It's yeah. not, right? What do you need to know to be able to get to the point where you can produce and sell uranium into the market? Yeah. What do you need to know? Mm. I, th I have a phrase I call, what do you not know? Right, okay. And I think that a lot of people don't know mm. what they don't know. Okay. okay. Yeah. And uh, I think that's where a lot of people fall down in this business, not just uranium, but the resources as a whole. But, but um, it's so, a very complex industry. Um, yeah. You know, when, 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 when you look at it, um, you know, from, um, you know, a, obtaining a permit, uh, from staying in compliance, um, when it comes to dealing with potential legal challenges, which we deal with all the time, mm. um, you know, then you got the, the technical risk, uh, you know, the commercial issues, mm. um, you know, the, the, um, you know the, the, the end users having confidence that you can deliver mm. uh, what you say you're going to do. Um, and, and then, you know, and, and lastly, and this is something that most people don't understand, most new projects mm. fail. Most like, new it's, projects it's like fail. Mining. It's like mining, Exactly, right? mining, but mining, I think mining. in uranium it's even probably a higher percentage. Now, you know, some of the bigger companies like, uh, you know, Cameco, uh, you know, mm. do, you know, you know, exhaustive studies and yeah. they have uh, good qualified uh, technical people to, 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 to reduce those, those odds quite substantially, mm. uh, but it's still a risky business. And, and so it still goes back. I think, I think the one thing that, uh, and I think I mentioned this to you in the past, that, you know, if you have, um, you know, 10 critical items uh, of mm. a project that have to be met to have a successful project, mm. you, you can't have a successful project with eight of the 10 yeah. or seven of the 10 yeah. or nine of the 10. And so a lot of people uh, underestimate yeah. that they have to have 10 of the 10 yeah. because that one missing element, you know, yeah. it could be grade, it could yeah. be recovery, yeah. it could be uh, commercial prices that uh, are sustainable. Um, it could be the, 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 the you know, the, 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 the debt load to get these things going. If one of those things is, is, is out of sequence, yeah. you don't make it. Yeah. I, th I think that's true, and I, the more I, well, the longer I've been in the uranium space in terms of this discovery process we're going through, the more I see that the "you don't know what you don't know" phrase is true, because I get I see some very enthusiastic management, even if they've got uranium under the ground. I'm not sure they've got the know-how to get it out of the ground, and what disturbs me is the stories in the market for. Uh, retail investors, you know, family offices, high net worths who don't have the ability to d discern what winners and losers will look like because that horrible phrase, all boats float on a high tide, I don't think is true. I think some companies are born more equal than others. And uh, that's why I'm interested in this conversation with you as to yeah. trying to understand what, you know, what are the things you learned you know, from the days when Paladin was, you know, ruling the world and, the, you know, some of the projects you've worked on all over the world, you know, what those mistakes were. What, yeah. what are the things which say this company's going to fall over? How do, how do you spot yeah. that? Well, look, I think, too, that when, um, particularly with the people that don't know what they don't know, and I, I hope mm. to hear that as you start asking that question, do you know what you don't know? Um, uh, because it's an important question yeah. uh, to ask. But yeah, it is. I think that um, a number of people that haven't done it before are, are overly optimistic, you know, um, that, you know, they can do things uh, cheaper or better than some of the older guys like me that have been around. Um, you know, I think that, um, you know, like when I said that we need, you know, north of $50, you know, probably a six handle to really be sustainable. Yeah. You know, there would be a number of the people that have never done it before say, well, hey, we're good at 40 or we're good at 45 and mm. we're going to be lower costs than, you know, energy fuels or your energy. And when I'm saying that those prices, you know, that's, that's trying to put, that's having, including a margin. You got to have a margin here. Mm. So, um, you know, again, um, 
you know, the, 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 the key issues is you've got to have a project that, that has a margin and cash flows and, uh, you know, produces at the levels that you expect because it's very common that you think you're going to produce a million pounds or two million pounds mm. per year and you turn out producing on some of these lesser projects, you know, 200,000 pounds or 100,000 okay. pounds. There's only 55 companies, but there's still going to be casualties yeah, in the cycle, right? Yeah. Um, are those opportunities for companies like yourself who have produced, who have got cash, who, I mean, do you have the ability to raise cash? Are funds talking to you? Are they interested? Uh, yeah, look, look we're, we're kind of in a unique position because I think people realize what our product is, what we have. Mm. Um, um, you know, sure, some of these, these, these companies, uh, if, if you have a, a, a good project, mm. that's a good start. Yeah. And of those 55 companies, how many of them really have good projects? And I would say it is a very, very small circle of them that do. Single digit? Um, what? Single digit? Yeah, I'd say single digits. Who do you Easy. like? Um, well, yeah, you look at I, you know, look at some of the some of the better projects out there. I, you know, not including the Cameco because mm. we're not kind of in that league. Sure. But I mean, the future project, you know, next gen, you know, the Aero project, uh, mm. looking out to the future. The question mm. is, when is that future? Yeah, looks very good. Um, uh, you know, and mm. and you know, I still like uh, you know, um, Langer Heinrich is a good project. Uh, there's some private projects out there. Um, uh, one of the best private projects out there that nobody even really knows about is the Four Mile Deposit in Australia. Uh, I was involved with the discovery of that. Um, it's owned by General Atomics, uh, the, the Neil Blue mm. uh, private asset. It's one of the best in the world, mm. um, but again, gets very limited airtime. Yeah. Um, but you really get down to a very, very small circle of projects. Um, there are some good projects that are, are still being permitted. Um, you know, it's still the jury's kind of out on whether they do actually get their permits. Mm. Uh, even if they get their permits, are they going to get legal challenges in certain cases? Yeah. So uh, I can easily say that uh, single digits uh, of, of projects out there in the world, um, I'm very comfortable with that I, ca yeah, characterization. And I, and I think people need to listen to that statement. They really do. Investors need to listen to that statement because I think that is true. It's a question of who those single digit uh, companies are, right? That's, the, that's the, the difficulty for retail family office high net worth to identify them. Because they, yeah, you know? and, 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 and there are a number of the companies that if you gave them to me, well, that, I that's wouldn't a, take them. Well, that, I wouldn't take them if you gave them to me. Right. Some of them you'd have to pay me to take them. <laughs> and, and, you know, if, if, if you've got right. large, uh, you know, uh, market capitalizations on some of those kind of projects, mm. uh, yeah, I would be concerned. Um, but, you know, if you go back to, to, to 2006, 2007, 2008, uh, you're, you're right, the rising tide, people kind of, you know, rise with it uh, for a while. But it's, it, you got to look at it as uh, you better have a pretty good exit strategy. Yeah, there's, if, a, there's if a hole in, in the boat. Kind of a stock. There's a it, hole in the boat. There's a hole <laughs> in the boat. <laughs> right? And the but, boat's going to sink. It's going to sink. But this is a really interesting question. Uh, sorry, really thought, interesting thought. So the question to me is, we, we all know the uranium funds. We, there's whatever, there's 12, 14 of them at the, at the moment globally, right? Mm -hmm. They've got in early, you know, they got in two, two and a half years ago, a year ago, it, you know, some new ones, you know, Wolf, was it Wolf Dance, you know, recent one, uh, it was Sashi. Um, but the generalist funds, when it's, say the market does turn, and we haven't talked about that yet in terms of timing, your prediction on timings, okay? Yeah. But if it does, if and when it does turn, these generalist funds kind of come back in, but they have the, they have very little uranium knowledge. They're going to make the same mistakes as a lot of investors, aren't they? Yeah. You know, giving money to companies which just don't have a chance of working. Correct. So that's a problem for you, isn't it? That's a, is that distraction? Well, it gives look, them money to survive for a you while, know, right? it, it, um, we, we always got to compete with, with public companies and, and the changes in investor sentiment and whatnot. You always got to compete with everybody out there. Right. And, and, you know, I just say that, um, you know, when you start looking at, um, you know, it, it, it depends on, on what your, your investment strategy is. Mm. You know, some investors, it's, um, it's to get in early to participate in sort of desperation finances and then rise the tide up and then get out. Yeah. Um, you know. So that's a different energy, business model. That's true. That's yeah, my point. And, and, you know, so there's different ways that people play the game there. Mm. 
Um, but uh, you know, energy fuels. Um, you know, we're focused on on on, on uh, reality, and we're focused on uh, you know good assets and, and good people and you know proven projects. Um, but, but what does reality look like today when there's this mystery around price discovery? And what's, what's happening with that? You know, we, we've had a few events have happened to date. We're not going to talk about those. Uh, it's well covered. And we've got some events coming up. Uh, there's all these events which people are hoping as catalyst moments for change in the price discovery component of this, right? Yeah. So how can you say what you're, you know, you're looking at the reality of the situation? Because you don't know what the reality of the situation is today. No, you, you don't know. So again, <laughs> Go back to do you know what you don't know? There's only so okay. many things you can control. Hmm. Um, you know that's um, that's why I guess over the you know over 40 years I've been in this business. You know I try not to have a single arrow because a single arrow if you miss, um, you know can be devastating. Yeah. So you know we try to you know diversify. Hmm. Um, you know keep a strong balance sheet. Um, and um, you know, cover ourselves as many ways as we can uh, to protect our shareholders, mm. um, but at the same time, not lose the leverage for the upside. So, uh, it, you know, it's I, when, whenever somebody says, and and I've had people say this that, uh, particularly with like in situ recovery, uh, they say it's it's it, it's simple, it's cheap, it's elegant. Be be careful, of those people because it isn't as simple and cheap and elegant as they say. Now, in the right environment, it works very well. The wrong environment, it doesn't work well. Well, in an environment where there's a lot of cash flowing around, everything works for everything a while. Everything works right? for a while. You know, right. it, like you said, if the, the, if the tide rises quicker than the boat sinking, yeah. you're still gaining altitude. So, um, and, and so much of this is driven on how these companies are, are sold, promoted, mm. um, what circles they get in, you know, who gets behind them. You know, a lot of these uh, companies, like I said, they may do a financing or something and they get some very well-heeled uh, promoters associated with that that can sure. push the stock. So, so uh, it, it's not a level playing field on how everybody, you know, crawls up that, so let's, that let's come on. Let's come on to your project in a second, but if I, I'm looking at the market cap of some of these companies which are DFS stage. They've got a reasonable amount of ore under the ground, but it's going to cost hundreds of millions to get it out of their ground. So are there any companies that you think, actually, that's not bad? Don't have to name names. Just say, yeah. are there companies there you think, I've got some cash, it's cheap, maybe there's a conversation to be had? Well, look, I'm always having conversations with just about everybody in the space mm. here. Um, you know, if it makes sense, um, you know, we'll consider it. Okay. Um, you know, and but a lot of things just just don't make sense. And and the other thing too is that when you're in a down market like this, um, yeah. you can only take on so many um, new things that require cash. Um, I mean, True. even even when you've got like in our case where we've got a number of permitted assets, mm -hmm. it's expensive to 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 hold those assets and um, y you know to add something else, particularly if that something else is is you know way down the list in terms of the quality right. of the asset. It doesn't make any it. sense. So you know, I think I think that um, and and this is something that people probably don't really appreciate, but you know, like. A number of our assets were owned by Union Carbide, and Union Carbide uh, was, uh, you know, a mm. multinational, huge company in its day. And um, you know, those 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 assets were screened through thousands mm. of deposits. Okay, mm. and they were the best for Union Carbide mm. at the time. Sure, they're kind of the kind of the, the older school kind of deposits. But they were screened out of thousands of deposits, and that was the best of Union Carbide. Those are the kind of assets that we have. Right. You know, if people pick up, you know, these these kind of, you know, well, there's a lot of different deposits out there. Not mm. all are created equal. And uh, going back to my single digit in comparison, mm. so I think people um, don't fully appreciate um, the screening that goes through. Like take take Cameco's assets, you know, like. MacArthur River mm -hmm. and Cigar, um, right. uh, you know, those, those, those were the best 
that were screened in Canada through um, SMDC, which is mm. the Saskatchewan Mining Development Corp, mm. and El Dorado. Yeah. Um, just imagine how much investigation, drilling, study mm -hmm. that was done to get the two best projects in Canada into a company. Yeah. It's massive. Yeah. No, I get that. So let's talk about your, your assets. The thing that stands out for me is the mill. We talked about it before, just briefly. There's three mills which could be in working order in a reasonable time. Some money was spent on them there some, somewhere. They're, they're in care and maintenance stage, but th there's three. You, you've got one of them. Yes. That puts you in a quite a strong position in, in the sense that there's a lot of people around you who may want to use that mill. And it's not just for uranium, you've got the vanadium component, which we haven't talked about for a while. Um, what are you doing with White Mesa at the moment? What, what? Well, um, really, White Mesa is kind of the only mill. If there are other mills. Um, Sweetwater Mill uh, in uh, Wyoming, owned by Rio mm -hmm. Tinto, has mm -hmm. been main very, maintained very well. Mm -hmm. doesn't have a tailings facility, yep. doesn't have a vanadium circuit, hasn't ran for... 30 some years. Right. Okay. Um, there's another one that is even in lesser condition. Um, well, look, the White Mesa Mill, we're, we're still producing um, a vanadium, mm -hmm. um, and that's gone well, other than the vanadium prices have softened. Uh, we're doing some um, cleanup work from a yeah, uranium right mine, a mm -hmm. uranium mine that's been on standby for a number of years, so mm -hmm. we're accepting that material. Uh, we've still got, uh, with temporary employees, we've probably got about 70 employees there right now. Um, and, um, Is that covering and, costs? Are you losing money? What's happening there? You know, it's, it's, if you look at the mill right now is um, probably cash neutral okay. right now, even though we're producing vanadium pretty much at cost. Mm. Um, it, the mill has been remarkable. Well, well, why do we have a mill that's, that's, that's operable yeah. in good standing um, because the mill has been so flexible over the years that right. it has been able to generate cash even in the toughest markets. Right. And so I would say the mill is probably break even, maybe makes a few million dollars a year or something, mm -hmm. uh, but it is underutilized. And, um, you know, we do uh, want to start, we, we are producing a limited amount of yeah. uranium right now there. Yeah. So, so right now it's, 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 we're in a position, we're in a, period, another phrase for you is the lose less phrase, okay? Mm. You know, when we can take in revenue and we lose less, but we can mm -hmm. maintain um, the operational status and maintain um, the expertise and the people, mm -hmm. um, we do it. That's not the way we want to operate long term. So, um, you know, it's, it's our goal that, um, you know, we're back uh, producing large quantities of uranium again, because mm -hmm. that still is our end game. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. And, but if again, if we just, just stay on this for a second, if I look at the other US players in this market, some are struggling with cash, because they, they're, they're small. Mm -hmm. They never had much cash. They've never been in production. They're sitting on uh, permits and licenses, and they're hoping the market turns and they can cash in on that. But they've got to find some buyers who can raise the money to do that. And do, you, do you think that the uh, there is a market for, to see what we saw in the last cycle where we went from 50, 50 companies to 400 companies? Or do you think the market is a little bit wiser to what's yeah, needed? I think the market is a bit wiser now. Right. Um, uh, you know, some of, these, some of these companies, yeah, they're, 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 they're going to sink. They're going to sink. And, just not economic. They, they, just, they just can't make it. Now, um, you know, and, but, but again, you know, it depends what pr the market does. Uh, the price can pave over a lot of sins here. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, and it, it isn't, it isn't um, um, unreasonable to think that some of these companies, you know, in an up market don't, you know, get their financing and they, they are able to get the project up. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't meet expectations, but then it lives on for, mm -hmm. for many years. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's funny, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a few projects out there in the world um, that have been around for 30 years and they have sucked in more dough than I can even say. Yeah. And they're still around. Yeah. And they're still going to be good. So I'm not going to mention names, but um, uh, it's amazing how things that shouldn't get up or should yeah. sink haven't completely sunk yet. 
they, they may have gone down a few times, but they bailed them out and they're, they're back on it's amazing. You know, partially floating. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, you think people would see the red flags, and wouldn't you? And there have been people that have made a lot of money on the upswings of those projects. Now, there's been people losing it on the downswing. So, but yeah, it's not, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's a risky model when, 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 when you, you try to, 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 to make money on a sinking ship. Yeah, well, exactly. And I think this is the point why I'm raising this is because, again, retail, family office, high net worth investors don't know the games that are played. Yeah. You know, the, the, the deck is stacked in a way because the funds know what they're playing at. They've got a lot of choice, a lot of optionality and a lot of knowledge. You know, the, the large shareholders know a lot more than the, the retail guys. And, you know, I'm trying to help people stop or be able to spot and stop investing in those companies which are clearly there's a game going on yeah. or it won't last for long because there's always a downside and someone's going to get caught. Yeah. Some I mean, the, the bottom line is you, you, you try to pick the winners and you yeah. need to pick the winners. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and I have to say this, after all the time I've been in this business, um, I don't always get it right. Okay? No, no one I does. Can no miss, one does. No one I does. can miss right. um, opportunities that I... I maybe discounted or something, but, yeah. but you, you want to improve the odds and, and, and the key is improve. And, 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 you know, it's even amazing sometimes with some of these either more sophisticated investors or these funds mm. that, that have analysts and stuff, mm. how wrong they get it. You know, I've, oh, yeah. had, I've had people- For the last two years. I've had, I've had people, you know, <laughs> yeah. you, you talk to them and they, they say, well, we're in this space and we got into this, this, and this. And I think, man, those are the three that I would have turn them away from. Yeah. And, but I try not to mention names. I, I don't like to mention names because it's a small industry. We're all trying to do our thing. Um, but it is amazing uh, how many um, uh, poor investments have been made, even with people uh, that were pretty sophisticated. I, I've learned a lot after the camera has been switched off, talking to people about how the market's played, yeah. which companies will and won't make it. And you know, and you know, some of those things are starting to be true. And uh, I would, you know, six months time, I'll, I'll, I'll tell everyone whether or not those people were, were, were right. We're right. Yeah. So in the, in the meantime, let's talk about making friends. Utilities. Are they still? Yeah. Are they talking to you? Oh, no, look, it. I think we've got great relationships with utilities. Really? And and um, I think that um, again, um, there's different posturing that goes on. Um, but I, I. I'm very confident that the utilities, um, or at least the, the ones that I've talked to, yeah. um, we have very good relationship with them because right. they know that we've been doing this. I've been doing this for decades. I've yeah. delivered uh, uranium. Mm. I've uh, worked with them on, on other initiatives yeah. um, you know, jointly. Yeah. Um, I think that um, um, they, they, they appreciate, understand that this is risky business and that not everybody will produce. So. Mm. Um, no, I don't look at. I think that um, myself and our company and the people that work for our company have probably the best reputation out there I don't, in I don't, I don't, the United I don't. States. And I'm not just saying that because yeah. I'm trying to be cocky or anything. Yeah. But we have a very strong reputation mm. as doers and deliverers, mm. and 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 we don't overpromote. Okay. Okay, but there's also a game to be played there by the utilities. I mean. As long as there are reserves, there's, there's stock out there that can be bought cheap, it's in their interest to buy it cheap, right? As long as they can, up until the moment where they think they need to give the market notification to start producing again, or they're going to run out, okay? Yeah. So there's a very fine balance there. Or do you think they want certainty and it doesn't really matter in, in the scheme of things, it's not a lot well, of money? Again, it's, it's, not a simple, it's not a simple answer, but you know, over the years, um, this security supply um, uh, has always been touted as very, you know, re, you know, it's critical, um, and it 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 hasn't really manifested. There's always been product available somehow, some way, and and I think I think some of the utilities will say, hey, you know, we've been getting it from here and there forever, yeah. but but a lot of things change. Um, you know, if you go back uh, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Um, you know, a lot of the uranium producers were very large companies, very mm. strong balance sheets, um, mm. um, less um, vulnerable to the uh, ups and downs like we are now because most of the, the front end, um, at least in the companies our size, are much more vulnerable to market swings and everything. 
uh, you know, looks what's happened to um, you know, Russia and the former Soviet Union, uh, you know, when it collapsed, um, uh, you know, look at some of the geopolitical tensions, look at the fact that, um, you know, the United States uh, as the largest consumer of uranium in the world, um, you know, is effectively uh, down to zero uranium production right now. You know, I mean, sure. we're producing a small amount, zero conversion and zero uh, enrichment with, with U.S. technology. Um, you know, I, th I think there's these dynamics that the utilities are starting to refocus on. Um, and I think that they are starting to, even though I think that the belief is there is no world shortage of, of mm -hmm. these products, that um, not all products in the world are created equal mm -hmm. because of potential geopolitical kind of issues that can manifest. Sure, so, but then that comes down, it's going to come down to price, to the uncertainty of yeah, delivery. Yeah, to, to an extent. Stuff, and, and, right? and look at so the, the, the When are they going to start talking? Like, when are they going to start numbers, talking? Look at, I numbers. Think, <laughs> every year, I said, it gets a year closer. Um, I think they're starting to, um, starting to have more of a dialogue than they did a few With years you? ago. Um, yeah, look, we talk to the utilities. Um, there are RFPs put out. We, we put out prices that, right. that we can deal with. Um, okay. You're not going to see us bid a, a project for, um, or a, a contract for, with a four handle. We buy it if we can trade into it, if we can buy the product. Sure. Um, but um, for, pro for produced pounds, you're not going to see us uh, okay. bid anything uh, under the, you know, in the 50s. And, and, okay, so we'll... we'll Move on from that price discussion because yeah. we, know, we know what number you're looking for. When it does come down to it, whenever that moment is, you're looking for contracts, you told me before. Mm -hmm. We won't talk about subsidies today. We've covered that bef again before. But what split of uh, contract versus spot or however you want to sell into the market are you looking for? What, what's, what's that going to look like for you? Yeah. Look, again, it depends on how the market's responding. Yeah. Um, you know, my belief is that, you know, you should have um, probably around 70, 65 to 75 percent under long-term contracts at right. least. Mm. Um, you know, it, it, it depends, too, on kind of the modularity of your projects. <coughs> For example, if you have two or three projects, mm. you could contract 100 percent for two of the three. And leave one open, and you can move things around to, mm. to cover, you know, the changes in the market if the spot price was lagging or whatever. Mm. But you know, if you got, um, you know, longer term contracts, you know, it, and, and, and you know, generally speaking, the uranium price will be higher, sure. uh, assuming that you're not getting some subsidy. Sure. So it depends on all those dynamics but mm. but but the one thing i have learned is that and this is where we're blessed is when you have two or three projects you can shift things around if you have a single project mm. and you say i'm going to contract for 65 percent right well you then you're open to the 35 percent on the market fluctuation it's going to be a very significant uh, put you in a very si significant risk profile mm. because of that single project. If you have three projects, you can do 65% over three, mm. or you can consolidate to 100% over two. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You know, so you, you, it gives you uh, a lot of flexibility in how you position yourself. Okay. Your share price, it's been hammered. I, I, not necessarily fairly, but it's been hammered. Okay. Yeah. Um, what are you going to do about it? Well, we've got to get the share price up. How? Um, I'm, I'm doing a lot of marketing. Um, you know, we're still exer exercising our, our strategy of um, multi-prong strategy, not just focus on the uranium price. Right. Um, what, was that I think, what do you mean multi-prong? Well, the multi-prong is, 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 is these, these different aspects of our business. You know, the uranium, mm -hmm. um, you know, our efforts with the U.S. government, um, the vanadium, uh, the alternate feed, uh, right. clean up, those type of things. We're, we're, we're actively pursuing all those elements. Okay. So some of those involve revenue. Yep. Vanadium potentially if the price moves. Yep. 
at very worst, it's price uh, cost even, neutral, break yeah, even. Cost okay, even. U.S. government. We're talking about the working group. That's October. Correct. Okay. And you're trying to influence that by having conversations? Are you engaged with them? Well, um, yeah, look, we're engaging where we can. It, it's, it's a government uh, working group, so their industry is not at the direct table on that. Right. Um, but, you know, there's a number of groups um, that are talking to the various members of that working group, mm -hmm. um, providing information. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite different from the 232 process. 232 was kind of all focused around commerce. So you had uh, the Department of Commerce to feed information yeah. and, and a few other departments. You know, now the working group has 13 different members. Yeah. Um, and I have to say in the early days, that was a little daunting that we had that many members. But, but I will say that um, uh, I'm extremely pleased at the reception um, that these various working group members are giving to this topic of the front end nuclear fuel cycle in the United but, States. But, but so I think it's reception from what? I mean, you know, companies like yourself are screaming from the sidelines. What, what are you? What are they listening to? Well, I, they're they're listening to um, the fact that the U.S. is losing its capabilities. Sure. Um, and compared to to, sure. to Russia, its allies, and China and its allies, mainly um, where they're building their capabilities. I think that um, the, the reception is, this is illogical, and we need to do something to fix it. Um, it is, um, the, the, they're not asking why we need to do it mm. anymore, because they get it. Mm. And I think that, again, outside of the government, others understand yeah. um, the why as well, too. The how is the question. And that's, that's down to them and a lot of other people. You're one small cog in that very large machine, but you feel you're entitled, as the power companies are, to some kind of subsidy. That, that's a conversation we've had previously. Well, Is, has that changed? In, in, okay, in, entitlement, I hate that word. Um, uh, people, when they talk about subsidies <laughs> okay. and all that, you know, you can talk about it different ways. But yeah, um, yeah look at the, <clears throat> the power companies have, you know, a number of them have gotten you know, um, substantial relief, a lot of times just from the state yeah. that they operate in. And, um, you know, we, you know, we just want fair prices for a pound of, of uranium. Okay. Um, um, we can be competitive with the price of fair price of a Western produced pound in the world. Yep. But, um, you know, we can't necessarily be competitive uh, with um, some of these state owned enterprise pounds. No, I, and, I get and, it. And, uh, um, I get it. Okay, so multi-pronged approach to the market. You hope they're listening. Correct. I know you're trotting around the world talking to people as well. You're here. Yeah. Are you getting a good reception to the story? Because the story I'm hearing, you're number one producer in the US. You're set to go. You got the cash. There's a bunch of companies that perhaps don't have anywhere near what you've got. Are people listening to that story? I, I think they are. I right. think that... Um, uh, they I care? Do they reception. care? Look, I think they do. You know, I mean, not every investor is going to invest in uranium. You know, it's a sure. very, um, you know, kind of... It's a small market. Small market. Right? It's a small market to start with, but, but, you know, all investors have different, you know, tolerance to risk. And I think that a lot of investors just don't understand the nuclear fuel cycle and, and how it works. And I think that a lot of people invest in what they can understand, and they can't always understand uranium space. But, but I no, I'm, I'm getting um, uh, good reception from people. Mm. Um, I think that um, you know people. Uh, we we had very good uh, support last year. Mm. The shares performed very well. I think that um, you know people are seeing us as a value proposition with the fundamentals um, very much intact. When you look at the um, replacement value of our um, vast uh, investments, you know mm -hmm. it's it's hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe pushing towards a billion dollars. Um, it's effectively paid for. Mm -hmm. You know all those things are good motivators to investors. Uh, to take a position now, and I think that um, you know our shares are kind of creeping up from the bottom that we went to mm -hmm. after um, 
the delay in a decision on the government front uh, with 232 and mm. this working group. Um, but we are getting some traction now and we're, we're kind of coming back. Um, the, the, the general market seems to be coming back a little bit on uranium, but it got started from sort of a low basis. It got beat up pretty substantially. It did. Let's finish on that. Thank you so much. Lovely to see you here in London. Yeah, it's been great brilliant. To see you, man. We're going to stay in touch. Let's see how the, the market develops. Let's see how the story develops. I'd be interested to see in a couple of weeks maybe what you've got out of the WNA. Are you going to be in Nashville? Um, I'm not planning to be in Nashville, but I am going uh, on from, from London here to New York. Yep. Uh, there's a H.E. Um, um, uh, Wainwright conference um, later this week, and right. uh, I plan to be there. Beautiful. Tell us all about it when we see Good you next, to okay? You, Thank you again. Thanks very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed that. And, and if you did, please click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also catch us on our website, cruxinvestor.com and Cruxcast, our podcast series. Plus most days you can catch us on LinkedIn and Twitter. We'd love getting your feedback, so please keep that coming and we'll speak to you again soon.